I know a lot of people are big buyers of Intel security and I've been one person, at least in the YouTube finance space, that has not been a bull on Intel at all. But I do believe that it's a profitable company that is approximately fairly valued. And that's what I'm gonna cover in this video as I go through their Q3 earnings. So as you guys smash that like button, let me run that intro. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and I know a lot of you dislike the fact that I'm not a bull on Intel and that's okay we can disagree on certain types of valuations I do like AMD I do like Nvidia I'm just not a huge fan on Intel and I'm gonna walk you through exactly why using their Q3 earnings so you can see that they provided you with an executive summary of their earnings they do see a slowdown in demand which is having an industry-wide impact they provide us with their adjusted fiscal year outlook for the current year they are telling us that they're reducing costs which will help their margins and they're doing that by driving three billions of savings in 2023 and then growing that to eight to ten billion annually by the end of 2025 for me it's more of like a let me see it before i value it in so you're not going to see me value it in directly but you're going to see it valued in indirectly and of course they are also saying that they're embracing the internal foundry model i do not like this this is the major reason why i'm not a buyer of intel i just think as time goes on they just have a chip product that's not as powerful as their competitors that use uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. However, that doesn't mean that they can't make money. There's a lot of companies that will use Intel chips. There's a lot of consumers that will buy Intel chips as well. So it's not a death blow by any means. And this is how Intel Corporation has performed over the last year. They're down almost 50%, so 43%. And recall, guys, and I just wrote it in the top corner here so that if you sort of miss anything that I say, it's written there. But recall, guys, that I'm not a buyer of Intel for two reasons. The first one is that the company is heavily levered to the consumer PC market and has not materially diversified into other future-focused industries like AMD and NVIDIA have. Recall, guys, I really love the fact that both AMD and NVIDIA have moved into the graphics space. I mean, NVIDIA probably invented the graphics space, but also they're moving into autonomous driving. They're moving into huge processing power for servers. And they're not just focusing on computing power, but they're also focusing on performance. And so you have a lot of future focused technologies that are going to be required, especially as we move into sort of like the autonomous driving world, the web 3.0 world, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'm not saying that Intel won't be able to compete. I'm just saying that its products would command the least margins because they're less powerful in this environment. Now, the second reason why I'm not a fan of Intel, and I show it here on the top right once again, is that they are not competitive in the chips that they offer. Both AMD and NVIDIA, once again, use TSMC, which I think is the right approach. So there you have my thesis as to why I'm not a huge fan of Intel. However, let's go through their Q3 results and let's see what's going on. Overall, third quarter gap revenue is down approximately 20% year over year. And of course, we'll show you as to why they're down but notice that they also did in the quarter sell off their mobile eye business or at least list it into the stock exchange and they revised their full year revenue guidance to around 63 to 64 billion dollars reflecting continued macroeconomic headwinds but the point here was that the company is still profitable they're making money and overall this is how their businesses have performed their client computing group which i would say is approximately 50 percent of their revenues overall is down 17 percent they actually outperformed my expectations I actually thought that this segment was going to decline by 25%. And their data center group is actually down more than what I would have expected. It's down 27%. I was expecting 15% overall. So a little bit of an outperformance in their largest segment and a little bit of an underperformance in their second largest segment. And when it comes to the industry as a whole, I actually share their view both in the short term and long term. And so this is why I say like I don't hate intel i just think there's better options and so they are saying that the 2022 pc market is expected to decline in the mid to high teens and their customers are working through an elevated inventory level so of course that inventory glut however long term they expect pc usage run above the pre-pandemic levels and the server market is holding up they are seeing some pockets of weakness but once again i do expect the cloud infrastructure to continue to grow out and so intel's chips will be in demand from the cloud business now stop right there that is a future focused business and so some of you guys could say hey listen man you're not giving them enough credit for focusing on server and i'd say you're right now let's get into their cloud computing group recall guys that the cloud computing group is approximately 50 percent of their revenue so this is where i have a problem with intel 
And they're saying right now that they're dealing with lower revenues on PC demand softening, primarily in the consumer and education space, as well as OEM inventory reductions. And so what's really happening is we're dealing with a consumer slowdown coupled with an inventory glut that's causing margins to decline significantly. And so you can see that they're running with an operating margin in Q3 of 2022 of 20%. So that's really low. And here's where they provide their fiscal year outlook. So they are telling you that revenue is going to decline by approximately 15% year over year. Their gross margins are going to run at approximately 47.5%. Now, I think those gross margins could go down in 2023, but we'll see how that plays out. But here's the most important part. The company is going to make money in this year that's a lot better than a lot of other sort of like tech names that a lot of people have been investing in and so based on the current share price the company is trading at 14 and a half times earnings and so it's not expensive by any means and so here's the forecast that i have out for the company now once again this is just my forecast this is not a recommendation for you to buy the stock and there are no videos on this channel that actually i recommend for you to buy any stocks do your own research talk to investment advisors if you need to but the way that i'm forecasting this out is i'm saying that i expect revenue to decline by around 20% in fiscal year 2022. So I'm a little bit more pessimistic on the fourth quarter than they are. And in 2023, I expect revenues to decline again by 5%. 2024, it's even. And then 2025, it grows slightly, but I don't ever expect revenues to grow faster than seven and a half percent. Also on the gross profit margins, I agree with them that they're probably going to hit a gross profit margin of 47 and a half percent, albeit on a lower top line number. And then that 47.5 does not turn back into that 50% level until 2025. But notice that into the future, I'm not using a gross profit level that they experienced pre-pandemic. So that 58.6, even in 2020, they had a 56% gross profit margin. So you can say that I'm being overly pessimistic in my valuation. And I would have to agree with you, but I just think we're in a new environment right now and I'm not giving them the benefit of the doubt right now. However, you could give them a higher gross profit margin, even like five years out and you're going to get to a bit of a higher valuation. And so what exactly does my valuation come out to be? Well, you can see using a 15 times terminal multiple, I'm valuing the company at approximately $29. Now you could easily put up some of those uh, expectations and get to a valuation of around $40, maybe even $50 if you're really optimistic. But essentially what I'm saying is that the current share price being at around $30 per share effectively reflects the valuation of the company. So I don't see a huge margin of safety. And you guys already know that I'm a big margin of safety investor. And so this is just not an opportunity for me. However, I want to know from you guys if Intel is a name that you're buying and why are you buying it? What are your estimates into the future? How does your model differ from my model? And if you want to get access to that model, you can get access to all of my models at the lower tier of the Patreons, which is just five bucks a month. And effectively, it just means that you're buying me a couple of coffees every month to get access to my work. Now, there is a computer business that I am a bull on. I see a 13% yielder for this company and it's owned by Berkshire Hathaway's Warren Buffett, at least a partial ownership. And so to get access to that video for a company that I may actually be adding to my portfolio, you can get access to that video right here.